So that was basically what was available on the website. So now that you guys have kind of had a chance to look through what I was looking at when I was trying to make my selections, let's actually get into what I picked. So first and foremost, I kind of already hinted that I got this book, but I did pick up Phantasma. So this is going to sound really strange, but when it comes to um, the concept of you know, H-E double hockey, hockey sticks, if you will. I um, am of the Hindu background. So for us, like our definition of that word is a little bit different than what it's classically defined as. But that being said, one of my favorite books that I've ever read and one of my favorite English projects that I've ever done in my lifetime when I was younger was in AP English when we read The Inferno by Dante. And it basically talks about the seven circles. And I thought that was incredible. The project that we basically did was then to talk about seven circles in ascending order and what would cause a person to be trapped in that circle, but in the modern world. So we ended up using um, high school and like modern day to kind of talk on that project. It was a video project. We had a blast. Our video was actually selected as one of the winners um, from all the classes that participated. And we're, I'm, from our understanding from the last time I talked to my high school teacher, she still uses it today as an example for this project. And it's just so much fun. We loved it so much. And so when I saw Phantasma, that was kind of what pulled at my heartstrings. So let me tell you guys what this book is about. So Phantasma only has two rules, stay alive and don't fall in love. When Ophelia discovers her mother brutally murdered, there is no time to grieve. She has inherited the family's fearsome magic and enormous debt. Circumstances go from dire to deadly. However, when Ophelia's sister decides to pay off the loan by entering Phantasma, a competition where contestants rarely escape alive and the victor is granted a single wish, the only way for Ophelia to save her sister is to win. But Phantasma is a cursed manor, full of twisting corridors and lavish ballrooms, staffed by enticing demons and fatal temptations. And Ophelia must conquer all nine floors to succeed, if her fears don't overtake her first. When a charming, arrogant stranger claims he can help, Ophelia knows better than to trust him. But with her sister's life on the line, Ophelia can't afford to turn him away. She'll just need to ignore the overwhelming dark attraction, drawing them closer and closer together. Because in Phantasma, the only thing deadlier than losing the game is losing your heart. So super, super excited to read this. Kind of gives me that Dante Inferno vibe. It also gives me Wicked vibes um, for those of you who haven't read that series. It is one of my all-time favorite series. Uh, it was written by... Um, Oh my god, why am I blanking? I have a whole shelf that's dedicated to her, um, but it's written by uh, Carrie Menescalo. There we go. Um, and she wrote the Wicked Trilogy, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. And then on top of that, um, sorry, not Wicked, it's Kingdom of the Feared. I don't know why I said Wicked. It's not Wicked at all. It's Kingdom of the... Feared Kingdom of the Cursed and Kingdom of the Wicked. That's where it's coming from. It's not the Wicked series. It's the Kingdom of series, and they're excellent. And then also, they are do she's now doing a spin-off standalone set of books for each of the different prisons, princes of hell. So we just got um, Envy last year, or two years ago now? A year and a half to a year ago now. And then the next book is actually being released very soon. It's coming out next month and I've already pre-ordered it. I'm so excited for it to come to my doorstep. But this gave me those vibes while also giving me Caraval vibes um, because of the fact that it's a stranger and she has a competition and it's a magical world and it's a fancy mansion. And I love both of those. So I figured a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of gruelala, a little bit of dark magic, a little bit of competition, like definitely gave me perfect October haunting vibes and I'm so excited to dig my teeth into this. Next up we have The Night We Lost Him. Now this is written by Laura Dave and I absolutely loved this other book that she wrote and I ended up getting that too because I still had it in stock, which was the last thing he told me. Now, this book was incredible. It's set in a combination of San Francisco and Texas. It basically follows these this woman as she tries to figure out where her husband has disappeared to. He just randomly disappears out of his life and leaves his 
new wife and his step, uh, her stepdaughter alone, and he has to fig she has to now figure out the mystery of why he has disappeared. Leads her on this all kinds of crazy adventure, and it was probably one of the best books that I read last year. I loved this book. I adored this book. I was so excited when I found out Book of the Month still had it, and I had to get my hands on it. So when I saw that Laura Dave had released a new book, I was like, I need, I need in my life. What I don't know is if this is a sequel or a standalone, but let's find out. So this book, which is the new one that came out, um, uh, I don't understand fully if this is a follow-up, but let's go here. Liam Noon was many things to many people. To the public, he was an exacting self-made hotel magnet fleeing his past. To his three ex-wives, he was a loving, albeit distant family man who keeps his finances flush and his families carefully separated. To Nora, he was a father who often loved her from afar, notably a cliffside cottage perched on the California coast where he fell to his death. The authorities rule the death accidental, but Nora and her estranged, her estranged brother Sam have other ideas. As Nora and Sam form an uneasy alliance to unravel the mystery, they start putting together the pieces of their, fa their father's past and uncover a family secret that changes everything. With Laura Dave's trademark blend of soulful suspense and evocative family drama, The Night We Lost Him is a riveting page turner with a heartbreaking final twist that you will never see coming. I'm super excited to read this. I don't think it's related to the first book, actually. I think it's a completely different standalone book because the first one is following Owen Michaels and Hannah. So this is a completely different set of characters, but I am excited to see where this one will take us as well. I can honestly tell you the first book threw me for a loop. It gave me all the vibes I wanted with a quick paced, fast, thriller, suspense vibe book. And I dug my teeth into this. So I was very, very excited to read this. So when she released this one, I was like, must have. Then next up, I have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Now this book has actually been out for a while, but I've heard wonderful things about Kristen Hanna. I have started but never finished Four Winds by her and I do actually want to give that one another chance. I think I was just not in the right mindset when I started that book but she writes historical fiction. I know a lot of people really enjoy historical fiction. I've read quite a few historical fictions. My personal favorite author for historical fiction is Daisy Goodwin but I've never really given Kristen Hanna a chance and I've heard The Nightingale is one of her best books that she's ever written and I've also heard The Women is absolutely wonderful so I do want to actually dedicate time to Kristen Hanna and I do plan on doing a video that's dedicated to her books as well. So at some point I will be reading The Nightingale, The Four Winds, and um, The Women and doing a little review on those three books. So when I saw that Book of the Month had actually selected this book as one of their choice books and that she's a repeat author with them and that all three books were available on Book of the Month, since I had the other two, I decided to go ahead and get my hands on this one. Let me read the inside um, of this one too so you guys know what it's about. In love, we find out who we want to be. In war, we find out who we are. France, 1939. In the quiet village of Caravo, Vienne, Moria, Mor Moria, Mor I don't know how to say his name. Sorry, guys. Say Says goodbye to her husband, Antoine, as he heads for the front. She doesn't believe that the Nazis will invade France, but invade they do, in droves of marching soldiers, in caravans of trucks and tanks, in planes that fill the skies and drop bombs upon the innocent. When a German captain requisitions Vienna's home, she and her daughter must live with the enemy or lose everything. Without food or money or hope, as danger escalates all around them, she is forced to make one impossible choice after another to keep her family alive. Vienna's sister, Isabel, is a rebellious 18-year-old, searching for purpose with all the reckless passion of youth. While thousands of Parisians march into the unknown terrors of war, she meets Gaetian, a Parisian who believes the French can fight the Nazis from within France, and she falls in love as only the young can, completely. But when he betrays her, Isabel joins the resistance and never looks back, risking her life time and again to save others. With courage, grace, and powerful insight, best-selling author Kristen Hanna captures the epic panorama of World War II and illuminates an int intimate part of history seldom seen. The Woman's War. The Nightingale tells the stories of two sisters separated by years and experience, by ideals, passions, and circumstance, 
each embarking on her own dangerous path toward survival, love, and freedom in German-occupied, war-torn France. A heartbreakingly beautiful novel that celebrates the resilience of the human spirit and the durability of women. It is a novel for everyone, a novel for a lifetime. So that just sounded really beautiful to me, and I love the fact that it's following the story of two sisters and they're going through something so intense and crazy. Um, this kind of reminds me of Jojo's, Jojo Moises, um, what is that book called? The Girl You Left Behind, which I absolutely loved that book. And that's also um, not quite this because these both, both of these women are going through these experiences at the same time. But in that one, there's a woman who's going through um, modern day experience and then a woman's story from the past also centered around wartime. And I loved that book and I loved the strength of those two female characters. So I'm hoping this will create that same experience for me. And then last but not least, I love Leanne Moriarty. She is one of my favorite authors. Um, the Husband's Secret was absolutely incredible. Big Little Lies was phenomenal, was obviously turned into a TV show. Um, Seven Perfect Strangers was interesting and a fun read, and that was obviously turned into a show as well. She's just written such great books. Um, Apples Never Fall was also a very intriguing book as well. I think the more time you have to ruminate and think about it, the better that book is. So when I found out that Leanne Marty Moriarty had released her next book, which is Here One Moment, I absolutely had to pick it up. I think the way that she writes characters, the setting of Australia, as well as the fact that each of these books happens in a very short time span, um, and it's like day-to-day -day life things, but she's writing it in such a suspenseful, intriguing way is something that really pulls me towards Lirian Moriarty's books. I've never been bored reading any of her books. Apple Never Falls, I think, took me a little bit longer to get into and entertained with, but I do think at the end of the day, it was a phenomenal book and I really, truly enjoyed it. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this one as well. So this new one is, if you knew your future, would you try to fight fate? Aside from a delay, there will be no problems. The flight will be smooth and will land safely. Everyone who gets on the plane will get off, but almost all of them will be forever changed. Because on this ordinary short domestic flight, something extraordinary happens. People learn how and when they are going to die. For some, their deaths are far in the future, age 103, and they laugh. But for six passengers, their predicted deaths are not far away at all. How do they know this? There were ostensibly more interesting people on the flight, the bride and groom, the generate possibly famous woman, the giant Hemsworth-esque guy who looks like an off-duty superhero, the frazzled, gorgeous flight attendant, but none would become as famous as the death lady. Not a single passenger or crew member will later recall noting her board the plane. She wasn't exceptionally old or young, rude or polite. She wasn't drunk or nervous or pregnant. Her appearance and demeanor were unremarkable. What, what she did on the flight was truly remarkable. A few months later, one passenger dies exactly as she predicted. Then two more passengers die again, as she said they would. Soon no one is thinking about this, uh, thinking this is simply an entertaining story at a cocktail party. If you were told you only had a certain amount of time left to live, would you do things differently? Would you try to dodge your destiny? Leanne Moriarty's Here One Moment is a brilliantly constructed tale that looks at free will and destiny, grief and love, and the endless struggle to maintain certainty and control in an uncertain world. A modern day Jane Austen who humorous, humorously skewers social mores while spinning a web of mystery, Moriarty asks profound questions in her newest I Can't Wait to Find Out What Happens novel. So I'm really excited to read this. I think the premise is really interesting. I love that idea of like, what would you do if you knew that the end was coming? How would you live your life? Like, what would you think about? I think that's a very interesting question. Um, I think it would definitely strike up a lot of moral gray areas for some of these characters. And I think it might actually completely change how they view the rest of their lives. So I think this will be a fun read. Also, every book of the month box comes with a bookmark and it always has a little quote on it. So this one is back for more. And so um, this one was submitted by Chelsea C in Lynchburg, Tennessee, who has been a member since 2023. And it's just absolutely adorable. And I'm very much excited to be able to use that in my new haul of my book of the month books for the month of September, which is quite insane if I may say so myself. That being said, let's talk about the other two special editions um, because they're just fun. So this book over here is written by Abigail Owen. I do believe this is going to be a series. I'm not 100% sure, but this is 
the Games Gods play. And I just thought this looked amazing. It says on the back, she'll fight for her life for the God of Death. Um, and so this is what it says on the inside. The gods love to play with us mere mortals, and every hundred years we let them. I have never been favored by the gods, far from it, thanks to Zeus. Living as a cursed office clerk for the order of thieves, I just keep my head down and hope the capricious beings who rule from Olympus won't notice me. Not an easy feat, given San Francisco is Zeus's patron city. But I make do. I survive until the night I tangle with a different god. The worst god, Hades. For the first time ever, the ruthless mercurial king of the underworld has entered the crucible, the deadly contest the gods hold to determine a new ruler to sit on the throne of Olympus. But instead of fighting their own battles, the gods name mortals to compete in their steed. So why in the underworld did Hades choose me, a sarcastic nobody with a curse on her shoulders as his champion? And why does my heart trip every time he says I'm his? I don't know if I'm a pawn bait or something else entirely to this dangerously tempting god. How can I when he has more secrets than the stars in the sky? Because Hades is playing by his own rules and death will win at any cost. So I just thought this sounded so, so fun. I love a good Greek mythology, especially something that's about the main gods and the competition. Percy Jackson series is one of my absolute favorite. Heroes of Olympus was another great series. And then I absolutely loved um, Rick Riordan's books in general that surround this. Um, there's obviously the Oracle series, which follows Hermes. I mean, he's just run amazing work in this realm for young adult. So when I saw that this had been released, I had to pick it up. Lore is another book that I absolutely adore. It's also Greek mythology. It's absolutely wonderful. It is a standalone novel. It is excellent. I also picked up Hera, as you guys remember, if you've seen my previous book of the month video, which is a um, retelling of the goddess Hera's story um, by the standpoint of a strong female lead and the morally great choices that she had to make. Like, I just love Greek mythology retellings. I also read Stone Blind recently, which is Medusa's story retold. Circe is another great book by Madeline, um, and she just did a phenomenal job of sharing that story of that character. I also really, really enjoyed The Song of Achilles. So in general, just really, really love Greek mythology books and have always enjoyed them. So when I saw this and then I saw how gorgeous this book was, I had to get it. This book is available on Amazon, um, and I believe there are still copies available. Let me just open this up so you guys can see how beautiful the cover is. We have that beautiful, beautiful foiled front, which is a picture of San Francisco. Then the interior book plate is gorgeous. Like that is, oh my God, stunning. And then here is the back. And then this is the painted edges. Like how stunning is this book and it's 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 very much affordable it is an amazon's regularly priced book so if anyone's looking to expand their aesthetic fancy um you know fancy painted edge special edition book collection then i definitely think you should check this out i obviously haven't read abigail owen's book yet so i can't really comment on how good the book is but even the premise of the story just sounds absolutely mouth-watering and i can't wait to sink my teeth into this book. On the same genre of Greek mythology, um, this is another book that I picked up off of Fairy Loot. Um, the sequel to this book should be arriving soon and that will be in a different haul video. But this book is The Threads That Cut, I believe. One second by Fairy Loot. Um, so this book, let me read the back. The Cutter, the youngest of the Moira born descendants of the goddesses of fate and blessed with the ability to cut all threads. Enemy to the gods of old, far for with her blade, she will cut a thread and the world will burn. So this is also based in Greek mythology. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that cover. Look at that metallic finish. I absolutely love it. The back is also stunning. And then 
the inside. In the city of Alante, the descendants of the Greek gods live alongside mortals. Io has left the city of Alante to follow the golden threads in search of the god on the other end. Her investigation takes a turn for the worse when her only lead vanishes, but not before she gathers some crucial clues. Now, a new mystery has unraveled, and all signs point to Nancy, the golden city, as a center of the conspiracy. But when Io uncovers a horrifying plot that traces back centuries, she realizes the future of the world rests on her shoulders. Does she have a choice, or was this simply her fate all along? A fantastical and utterly original world Every word is essential. Every sentence sings. A must read for all Greek mythology and fantasy fans. Sarah Underwood, author of Lies We Sing to the Sea. So I'm really excited to read this because I do love Greek mythology. Let me show you the inside cover and the front of this book. Like this is our stenciled front and you can see how beautiful that shine and sheen is. This is the interior book plate absolutely stunning and then we have the lovely painted edges so again very very excited to read this um fairy loop does still have this on their website so if you are interested in reading it it is still available they also have the reversible cover so you can choose to display this side of the cover should you want to do so um so that is also an option um and i just think that's so much fun so that brings us to the end of my recent book haul. I have many other books coming, which is why I'm not allowed to buy any books. So you guys won't see any Barnes and Nobles hauls for a while because my book collection has grown insanely and I'm super excited about it. But I do have a bunch more early orders from Fairy Loot that are coming in, hopefully starting around the October, November time, all the way through January, February. I also have books coming in from Illumicrate as well, and I'm excited for those series. Also, Illumicrate currently has special edition copies of the Off Campus series. So if you guys are interested in getting those books by um, Kennedy, she has uh, Al County to be exact. She has been celebrated for her off campus series, which is a romance series. Um, and it is a sports romance. So if that's something that catches your fancy and you guys do want special edition copies of that, the entire series will be releasing for pre-order soon on Illumicrate. They also have a bunch of other series that are currently selling and available for pre-order as well as individual standalones. So you can definitely go check their website out. Same thing with Fairy Loot. They have a ton of different books on their website. I also have some books coming from Owlcrate as well. And then I also have an eBay order of three books that are coming in because I ordered the second half of the set from Fairy Loot. So I got the other three books from an independent seller of the original Fairy Loot release of the first three books in this series, which is going to be perfect for October. So stay tuned. Those videos will all come out as they become available. But that brings us to the conclusion of this video. So in all, what I'm trying to say is I have a problem and I have bought way too many books. The other thing is I love Book of the Month. It is a wonderful book subscription service and it has so many different options available to you, including audible versions of books. Not audible versions of books, sorry, audio versions of books. Audible is a completely different service platform. I love them as well. I love the Amazon Audible app. Um, but outside of that, Book of the Month has now created their own audiobooks that you can select instead of a physical copy of a book if you want to do so. Um, I think starting in December, simply because of shelf space issues, I will probably switch to getting audiobooks from their site instead of physical copies of books, unless it's a book that I need in order to complete a series. Um, outside of that, I don't really have anything else for this video. I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here and this was kind of your vibe and you love book aesthetics, you love books, you love to read about books, you love to hear about books, you love to share your thoughts on books, you love to hear other people's thoughts on books, then you're in the right place. Welcome. Come join my addicted, addicted family as we tackle our obsessions for reading and experiencing new worlds and new genres and sharing it with everybody. I put out videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If that's your vibe, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. If you are coming back to join me as I talk more and more about my obsession with reading. Um, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this little haul video that I did today and that you guys are also enjoying your book of the month subscriptions if you have so chosen to join 
that subscription platform. If not, I do think it's worth checking out. It's definitely going to blow your mind. It's a wonderful service and you can find coupons all over the place for discounted rates. I hope one day I will be able to have a partnership with them, but for now, we will just appreciate from afar. Thank you once again for joining me, guys. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you, and I can't wait to celebrate more with you in the future as we continue on this bookish journey. Bye, guys.